I'm uh, Professor Peter Elwood and I work in Cardiff University and I want to tell you about a remarkable study that we have uh, been running for over 30 years. Well, we're now in Caerphilly, and behind us is Caerphilly Castle, built in 1270. It is the second largest castle in the UK after Windsor. Professor Elwood, I understand that your research team has done a lot of research on the benefits of healthy living. Please tell me about it. Well, in 1980, we approached every man in Caerphilly and the five villages around Caerphilly, and we asked them, would they take part with us in a long-term medical study? We were delighted because 90% of them agreed, and of those 90%, all of them have uh, cooperated with us over the 30 years. And we are very grateful to them and to their families, because we asked an awful lot. We recorded an enormous amount of detail about these men. But why men? Didn't you include any women in the research? Well, one of our main objectives was to look at heart disease. And heart attacks are very much more common in men than in women. So had we included women, we would have needed four times the number. And we didn't uh, have the resources for that. So we had to focus on the group at most risk and that was the men. But I can reassure the general watcher of this video that the results that we got are virtually the same uh, in men and in women. And the beneficial effect of healthy living is roughly the same in women as in men. And how would you define a healthy lifestyle? Well, it's become conventional in medical research to define five behaviours and then to group those behaviours into healthy lifestyles. The behaviours are non-smoking, a low body weight. Now we actually use BMI and a BMI under 25 we count as a healthy weight and that's simply correcting for height. Regular exercise, a healthy diet and a low alcohol intake. And we group those five behaviours uh, into various groups and term it a healthy lifestyle. Right. You say regular exercise is healthy, but how much <clears throat> exercise? Well, any exercise is beneficial, but the criterion that we set <clears throat> and try to uh, encourage people to follow is half an hour of moderate activity on five days every week, continuously going on month after month, year after year, half an hour a day, five days a week. And is drinking alcohol really healthy? Well, it is in a small proportion of people, a low alcohol intake within the limits and with occasional days without alcohol, that reduces the risk of a heart attack. But the trouble is that in the community in general, there is a lot of alcohol abuse. Sadly, it's worst amongst young people and it is increasing amongst young people. And <clears throat> alcohol abuse is associated with uh, an increase in blood pressure, in, in stroke, and in other conditions. So taken across the community, it's not really a healthy behavior, but in those who do follow the guidelines and have occasional days without alcohol, then it has a beneficial effect on heart attack risk. And what diseases did you find to be related to these <coughs> behaviors or lifestyle? The diseases that we focused on were diabetes, heart attacks and stroke, cancer, and uh, we looked at our overall survival. So tell me how the research was organized. Well, we measured everything we could at baseline. We Men came into a special clinic for well over an hour and we took very, very detailed information. We did a clinical examination with blood pressure and ECG and other measurements. And then we asked the men to come back before breakfast the next morning to give us a sample of blood so that we had fasting blood, which is better for certain tests. Mm -hmm. And did many of the men in Caerphilly cooperate with, with you in this work? Oh yes, yes. Uh, as I've said, 90% of the men we approached between 45 and 59 agreed to cooperate and throughout the 30 years uh, almost 100% of men stayed with us and cooperated fully and very pleasantly and we're very grateful to them. I understand there are some especially important results which relate to dementia. 
Yes, we did very detailed tests on cognitive function, that is the function of the brain, and we had a whole battery of tests to estimate how well uh, people were, their brain was functioning. And then during the 30 years, we repeated that several times. And in those people who showed a fall off in brain power, we asked a very highly experienced psychogeriatrician who has experience in uh, memory loss and in dementia, we asked him to examine the men with a marked fall in cognitive function and he diagnosed dementia, sadly, in uh, some of the men. So is Kefili now a very healthy part of the country? Do all the men follow a healthy lifestyle? No, sadly, less than 1% of people in the community in 1980 followed a truly healthy behaviour. 5% uh, followed four of the healthy behaviours, but only 1% followed five. Now we find in recent surveys, 30 years later, that those proportions haven't changed. Still, only 1% or less than 1% of people in Wales follow a fully healthy behaviour and about 5% follow four of the healthy behaviours. It's there for the taking. The benefits are enormous. So hmm. can I avoid these diseases and avoid dementia if I live a healthy lifestyle? There's no way of totally avoiding disease or dementia. But uh, those who follow a healthy behaviour, the ones who did sadly get a disease or became uh, demented, it was very much later, it was delayed by up to 12 years. And those who followed uh, some of the healthy behaviours showed a delay in the onset. We were actually surprised by the extent of the reductions. We found that those who, uh, the men who lived a fully healthy behaviour had 70% less diabetes, about 60% fewer heart attacks and strokes, and 40% less cancer. And with dementia, there was a 60% reduction in the amount of dementia in those who followed uh, the four or, the f or five of the healthy behaviours. So what could be done to persuade people to live a more healthy lifestyle? Well, that is the really difficult question because enormous sums of money are spent now on public health and on uh, health promotion. And uh, in Wales, something like £280 million are spent each year. And yet the proportion of people following a healthy, healthy lifestyle has not changed. There are only changes in the decimal places. And should the government and the health authorities do more to improve the health of the people? Well, I think it's very important to distinguish <clears throat> between the treatment of disease and the preservation of health. The government has uh, accepted the responsibility for the treatment of illness. The NHS has been set up. Health professionals are trained <clears throat> to treat disease. But the preservation of health is another matter. And that is your responsibility, it's my responsibility to do what I can to preserve the level of health that I have. Now the government can publicise results such as uh, we have found, can do what they can to promote it, but what they've been doing has not been very successful. There's no evidence of any increase in healthy living. So we really need new methods and new approaches to people, a new way of encouraging the uptake in order to preserve the health of people in the community. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video, this interview with Professor Elwood. If you want more information, at the end of this video there are links to a few sources of further information.